In this section, we'll talk about how to update or modify a resource using patch and the JSON merge patch payload. The JSON merge patch payload is described in RFC 7396. And in this example here, I'm going to demonstrate how to use it in order to add properties to a resource, modify an existing property in a resource, and also how to delete a property from a resource. In the far left hand side, I have the resource on the service. And this is before I apply the JSON merge patch to it. It currently has an address in it of one Main Street, a zip code of 98052, a phone number which has a home phone in it with this 555 number here. Now let's say that I on the client want to go and update this resource. I would do a patch operation from the client to the service and in the body of the patch I make this be a merge patch JSON document which looks just like JSON actually. So I'm saying here that I want the zip to be 98033. So the zip will change from 98052 to 98033. So after I apply this JSON merge patch, this is what the resource will be after the application. And you can see the zip has changed. I'm then saying I want the phone number to have home set to null. With JSON merge patch, when you set a value to null, that means you want to delete it. So you'll notice that on the right hand side here, the home is now gone because the null indicated to delete it. But I've added mobile here with 888, so this did an add operation. You'll also notice that anything that I don't mention in the JSON merge patch, like address, is left untouched. Okay? So the address remained with one main street. And now I have demonstrated how with this one IO operation, I am able to leave something alone that I don't know about, like address, I can modify zip, I can delete the home, and I can go and add mobile. So now let's talk a little bit about what's awesome about this. Well, applying this JSON merge patch this way should be atomic. So all these changes are happening at once at an atomic operation. You as implementing the service have to make sure that that is true. Also, JSON merge patch is item potent. What if this on the far right, the resource after is what we're starting with, and we retry this JSON merge patch. Well, since address is in here, address is left alone. Since the zip, we're saying make it 98033. Well, it was 98033, so this leaves it alone. The phone says delete home. Well, home's already gone, so it just is double deleted, if you will. And then it says set the mobile to the 888 number. It's already that, so it leaves it alone. So JSON merge patch also ends up being item potent, which is a great thing about it. But there's even more greatness here, in that it is version safe for partial updates. Let's say that in version seven of the service, we add some new property to the resource. Uh, let's call it foobar. Well, a V2 client doesn't know about this V7 property. So if it does a JSON merge patch, it will never mention foobar in the payload because it V2 didn't know about foobar. So if in the resource foobar is there and it's set to a value, that value will never be modified or reset by an earlier client, right? A client that didn't know about it. And so that's what makes JSON merge patch resilient to versioning too. And when you add new properties to a resource, it won't erase them and it can't modify them if the old, because the old client didn't know about them. So that's an incredible thing. Unlike put, for example. So if let's say version seven of the service added the foobar property, and then a V2 client did a put operation, the put is a wholesale replace. So that means it's erasing the resource on the server and replacing it with what's being put. The V2 client didn't know about foobar, and so now foobar is gone when the V2 client does a put. So that's what makes patch better. Um, okay, so of course the service must validate all the JSON fields, this is always true, and the business logic ensures that the resource is always in a consistent state. Um, it's recommended for, for the JSON payloads that you use camel casing and you have to avoid meaningful nulls. That is, you shouldn't have a value, who, uh, a property whose value is null because with JSON merge patch, 
sending something to null means to delete it, right? So those are logically the same. Having the property not be there or be there with a null is logically the same thing. Um, and then avoid arrays with JSON merge patch, as I've mentioned earlier in the course, unless order is critical. And the reason to avoid it is because it's more cumbersome for the client. The client has to read the entire array, then do whatever it wants to to the array, and then send the array back in the desired order back to the service. Whereas with JSON merge patch, I could just say, I want to make the zip code 98033. I don't know what it was beforehand. I didn't know that it was 98052, but now I can make it 98033. <clears throat> all right, so now let's put this all together, um, including versioning, so you can see it all at work. In the top left corner here, I show some service resources. There are three fields. There's an ID field, there's a field that was introduced in version one, and then there's a field V2 that's being introduced in version V2. The ID is a string, the V1 field's a number, and the V2 is, let's just say, a Boolean. So the first thing, let's say that a version two client wants to do a patch operation to go into the things collection and create a resource whose key is key, right? That would be the idea of the resource is key. And it passes here API version equal V2. So it's version two. This is how the service knows that it's a version two client that's coming, making the request. Because this is a version two client, it can go and set the V1 field to a number and it can set the V2 field to a Boolean. So this goes and creates our entry in the resource. Now let's say a version one client wants to go and read this. So it goes to the things collection and it uses the same key, but it says API version equals V1. So now the service knows that this is a V1 client and it should only return back to this client things that a V1 client would know and understand. In other words, the service should not return field V2 because the V1 client wouldn't know about that. After making this request, the service responds with field V1 is 1111, and you'll notice that field V2 is not here because the service should filter that out and not give it back to a V1 client since it wouldn't know what to do with it. Now let's say a V1 client does a patch operation because it wants to modify this, and it's going to set the V1 field to 2222. Two, two, two. Two, 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 three twos, okay? Well, the V1 client, it doesn't know about the field V2 um, because it was introduced in version two. So it couldn't possibly add field V2 here because it didn't know about it. So when it makes this request, it will modify this value to 222, two, two, but it leaves the field V2 unchanged and that just remains its value of true. So the V1 client is able to manipulate the properties it knows about and leave the properties or fields it doesn't know about untouched. So there's no data corruption, there's no data loss. Very nice. Now a V1 client, it can do a put operation now. A put operation means it's a wholesale replacement and it's changing the field V1 to 333. So when that does that, that's the same thing as deleting this a put is the same thing as logically as deleting it first and then putting it again. So that changes, the, I mean, the key stays, the field V1 becomes 333 and the field V2 is now reset from true to false because that would be its default value is false. And the V1 client just put a new resource up on the server. It didn't know about that field. So that field has to be set to its default value. 